Hi, welcome to this video lecture. We're going to continue talking about machine learning with Python and Scikit-learn. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk, be talking about how do you fit a nonlinear model. In our last video, we, we had some example data we were trying to fit to uh, a known output Y using known inputs, but we had each input represented in our model as just being a linear term. And we found that that caused us to have pretty poor R-squared values and high error. We were not explaining all the variance uh, very well with that model. So now we're going to advance to doing um, nonlinear models. So we are still going to have the same objective function. We're still trying to, uh, it's a least squares model. We want to minimize the sum squared error between our model estimate and the actual data. The thing that's going to change here is the form of our model. So we're going to have our estimate is equal to our intercept plus our each of these parameters multiplied by our features. And these features can be uh, just the, the input directly with this linear representation. Or you can do some pre-processing of your features. So you could take that particular input and square it. And now you can have this nonlinear representation of your model. So now we have this nonlinear model. This is just in polynomial form. You can have all different combinations of your different inputs here. So while this is a nonlinear model uh, with respect to our inputs, note that our model is still linear with respect to each of these model fitting parameters. So we still use linear regression to fit this model. We just do a nonlinear transformation on each of our inputs to create new features in our model. So here is every all the different parts of our model. So we still have our objective function with our estimate, our target, or our known data. Um, these are the decision variables, or our model parameters. Um, we we ha now have these new features that we have engineered. So this is a, a field called feature engineering or feature selection. We want to try to identify which transformations of our inputs are going to be going to have the most statistical value in a model of this form. So this is relatively easy to do. I'm going to start by using the same basic Python or Jupyter notebook that I had before. So we still import a lot of these same tools. Um, this is a tool that's going to be important, this pre-processing of our data now, because we want to transform our inputs, which were just raw inputs. We want to do these nonlinear transformations of our inputs to have to create these new features. But otherwise, all the toolboxes we're importing are the same that we did for the linear case. I'm going to go ahead and run that. We're still going to read in the CSV file. Again, that's going to be available as a link in the video description. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and download that CSV file. Just as a refresher, we plotted this data. And we found that Y, it looks on visual inspection, it looks like there might be a linear relationship with respect to X1. But notice that if we're just looking at a, a single variant analysis, Y versus X1, there's a whole lot of variance. So we're hoping that by using different combinations of inputs or features, we're explaining more of this variance than you can do with a single variate analysis. Y with respect to X2, it does look like it's nonlinear, so we're hoping that having a term here, like perhaps an X squared term as a feature, will be able to capture more of the variance in our final model. Um, again, at Y versus X3, this one looks a little bit more random, but maybe there's something here going on that we just can't pick up with the, this one-to-one -one, uh, purely visual inspection. So uh, some of the differences in this video, we're still going to define our X matrix as we're just pulling this out of our ML data data frame, telling it, okay, which of these variables are going to show up as, as known inputs to our model, and then here, which of these uh, data points from our uh, CSV file are going to show up as our output. Um, this is some new code here. This is where we're using that pre-processing toolbox. And what I'm telling it here is I, I want to create a model that has all possible combinations of my input variables in polynomial form up to degree two. So this would give us a quadratic model. So this P tells us, okay, create all of these different combinations for me. And then here I can just print those out so we can see which, what are the new features we're gonna be working with. And then finally, I now need to uh, apply these transformations to my X matrix. So here we're rewriting the X matrix. It's originally just X1, X2, and X3. Now we're gonna be doing all these transformations like 
taking x1 and squaring it, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and run this cell and show you what we're getting here. So this, this print statement here tells us, okay, now we're going to have all of these different features, all these different combinations. So we have, still have the linear terms, x1, x2, x3, but now we have x1 squared. We have this, what's called a bilinear term, x1 times x2. So we're going to try and see if that can add any predictive value to our model x1 times x3, x2 squared, all the way up to x3 squared. So after this, all the commands are pretty much the same. We divide our data into training and testing data using a testing data size of 20%. This is the, we're still using this linear, linear regression. So even though we have these nonlinear transformations of our features, those still just show up as data. And this is still a linear optimization problem with respect to our decision variables, which are the Ws or the, the fitting parameters. All right, so now we fit our model, just a simple line of code there. We're gonna look at our performance metrics here. So first we're gonna make these predictions with our training data and then with our testing data. Then we're gonna calculate the uh, mean absolute error for our training data, mean absolute error for our testing data, and then the R squared value for our training and testing data respectively. Okay, so if you recall, um, we had pretty poor R squared values before. We were only explaining about half of our variance for the training data. So notice now our mean absolute error has gone down dramatically because now we're capturing these uh, nonlinear relationships between our inputs, those features that show up in our X matrix and our output. So for our training data, our mean absolute error is 7.35, which is dramatically reduced from just using the linear model. It, the testing data, again, this is pretty typical for your testing data to perform a little bit worse than your training data, and that's because this testing data was not included in the model fitting, but this is demonstrating the model's ability to, to make predictions outside of the known inputs that went into our training data. Our R-squared is 0.97, so one way of thinking about this is we're explaining 97% of the variance now in our training data, and still just a hair lower than that for our testing data. So this is actually quite a good model. Uh, we're gonna go through this plotting phase to generate that parity plot. Look now where you see that this 45 degree line, um, we see that our data is holding much closer to that line. So now when we have um, our actual target data, let's say our target data was around 200, notice that our predictions are gonna be right around in that range of 200 plus or minus some error. So there still is error, it's not a perfect model, but this does a much better job than the purely linear model. We wanna look at these, the various contributions of our model here. So we wanna look at the value of the coefficient. So, if, so this code is set up to just plot with a bar plot all of these different combinations and plot the magnitude of the coefficients so we can see the relative importance of each of these coefficients. So we see that linear relationship with y to x1 is very statistically important. So this tells us something about the feature importance. So that x1 linear term is very important. There's not much of a linear relationship between y and x2, but there is somewhat of a linear relationship between y and x3. Um, x1 squared, almost no relationship. x1 times x2, almost no relationship. x2 squared seems like it could be significant. This x2 times x3 term seems like it could be significant. So this is now a much more complex model. It requires all of these extra features. Um, so while we do have a pretty good model fit, we may wanna do some weeding down of which of these features are important. So stay tuned. We're gonna cover a topic called regularization. We're gonna use some new techniques that tell us, that will help us balance model accuracy with model complexity. So this is a fairly complicated model with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different features. And we may be able to come up with a model that is simpler and doesn't have as many features, it doesn't require as many features, um, but that still captures a high degree of the variance in our model, or otherwise it has a, in other words, it has a, a really high R-squared value. So stay tuned for the next video.